it's not easy. I think that all musicians should just uh, be uh, taking care of their instincts, their creativity, without thinking too much. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when uh, there is a product that they, they like or you like, and maybe you start uh, putting together, changing the arrangement, changing the sound, maybe to make it more homogeneous with other stuff. Mm -hmm. But the first idea, I think we should be able to to not uh, think too much, but just leave like our it. instinct to go. Not think too much, I like that. And uh, so with your solo work, you have solo work, I presume. Yeah. And, uh, so that'd be, I guess, a third branch with you because uh, scores the band and your own solo stuff. I guess the uh, question might be, do you enjoy the challenge of making yourself work with the band as opposed to, you know, being able to branch out exclusively on your own? Yeah, it's, I think everything is part of the puzzle, right? Every experience you have uh, it can enrich another experience. With the band, uh, we are lucky with Goblin because we are sort of famous. And uh, when we tour, we have this uh, sold out venues with all these uh, people that like what we do. And that's an exchange of energy. And that's what, something that I love to, 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 to have. So that's a very good experience. And on the other side, I, I want to, to explore my own uh, stuff, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, getting some age now, I, otherwise I don't want to become 90 year old because I will be too late. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching this um, solo thing in, in different ways, trying to, to see if there is something good in, in me mm -hmm. and uh, opening uh, for different projects. This Inferno is a project that I sort of started sort of randomly, but it has a success, so I, I'm just to keep doing that. Then I, my solo album, then I am um, doing a couple of soundtracks, then I do some work for a spoken word, mm -hmm. new soundtrack under the actor, yeah, I read, yeah, telling, I read some on your... telling a horror story. I'm just trying to investigate, to, to discover a new lands yeah. <laughs> where, to, where to land because uh, it's the only way is just doing right doing yeah. doing 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 and trying to like what you do so I don't think I will compare what I do solo with the, with the, the band the mm -hmm. band is the band I try to be as much as I can myself in the band even if it's that difficult because I, I told you there's always uh, discussions fights fights and yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah I at this point moment in my life I just want to expose myself at maximum going to several directions and letting the public and the listener to decide okay I like this this is horrible this is uh, you better quit and do something different so, so you're open to uh, listening to your fans about uh, what you're doing and where perhaps they'd like you to go or what you what they might Absolute, want you to absolutely I the feedback is a uh, key for me uh, I you know there's something weird that uh, when uh, you are a musician, discover at least me. You think that you are doing something, the people receive something else totally uh -huh. good. And that something else is the real you, basically, that you don't are not aware of. <laughs> so it's not easy to put yourself in a objective perspective uh, seen from somebody else. So the only solution is trying to be yourself and uh, not mixed with other stuff, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Now you said that uh, you got uh, into the uh, Inferno project at random. Was there anyone, were you sought out by anyone or was this just something that you maybe, did you initiate that yourself in any way or? Yeah, it was a sort of a casualty, random. Last year in 2017, in April, there was an Italian uh, convention about Dante. Mm -hmm. There is a very famous uh, Okay, Italian language is sort of was invented. I mean, born in that age, 1300. Uh, yeah. And there was a convention about Italian Dante and blah blah blah. In this convention, the the director of the Institute of Culture, Italian, said, "Why don't you try to do a soundtrack on this silent movie?" Yeah, I saw the movie for the first time, and uh, I liked so much. I said, "Yeah, sure, let's let's try to do that." So I didn't plan anything before that. Actually, it was supposed to be just one thing, and that's it. Yeah. Nobody would think that would start a series of things. But it was so successful. Somebody else asked me to do it again in Toronto again, in uh, October. Successful again. Mm -hmm. 
and in between Goblin Tour and stuff, I decided, okay, I, I should maybe bring this thing all over North America, maybe Europe as well. Yeah. And now I'm setting up uh, the tourist uh, popping up dates, and oh, cool. that's and so I'm pretty happy to do that. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's interesting because you're saying Dante, the uh, the source material was sort of the origin of. You know, sort of a cementing of the Italian language. Yeah, Italian is derived from Latin. Yeah. But you know, as other languages, they evolve over the centuries. And that period may be more or less the period when we can identify not more Latin speaking, but a sort of a language that may be considered close, very yeah. close to the Italian right now. Yeah, yeah and, and it was also, it's kind of an interesting parallel that the movie itself uh, about the Inferno as one of the earliest feature films was also establishing the language of cinema at yes. the same time, so that's a nice... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, the very first feature movie made in Italy. Yeah. Uh, do you know, were there uh, any existing, um, maybe written versions of the scores for the movie that you are familiar with? I checked something online because just to, to see what other people how other people approach the problem there is a one tangerine dream uh, tangerine dream uh, oh, version yeah. but I don't think that was the whole inferno I think they took uh, two or three scenes and they did a concert just looping these scenes on the back okay. then there are other uh, things maybe another couple but that was a very experimental approach you know this uh, atonal thing oh, uh, like yeah, tangerine uh, dream impro no, this is other other people, but uh, I didn't li I didn't like listening in that way. I wanted to do something different, like a more uh, a real soundtrack, like uh, I don't know, with an orchestra and things like uh, a full, full body. Uh, oh yeah, I think that uh, director, that production, if they had the possibility to do music, would have done something like uh, similar compared to the 107 year old right. course. Yeah. So I mean, it's not goblin sound, it's not nothing, just uh, me, just trying to to bring people to this adventure that this guy going through the hell yeah. and see all this damn uh, theater. That's great. Now uh, you say it's uh, you, are you um, are you performing alone tomorrow? Yeah, oh, okay. so you alone, will... no computer, nothing, just one hour and more playing my keyboards uh, oh, with a couple of uh, electronic drums, that's it. Yeah, there, there's an old theater near where I live that has an old Wurlitzer organ and they occasionally do uh, silent movies with oh. the Wurlitzer organ accompaniment, so it's uh, something yeah. I've... I've definitely enjoyed uh, the, the one man, one piano, and uh, responsible for yeah, carrying us through the movie. Yeah, bring some life to something recorded, right? Yeah. And uh, I kept some uh, improv uh, in the part that I brought. Okay. So there are main themes, there are sounds that identify the scenes, of course. But some scenes that's very long, four or five minutes. Uh, I do the theme and just start impro improvising on that. So every every performance is a bit different because I, uh, this uh, little improv that I put on, on it. That sounds, that sounds good. Um, now, in regards to... Um, I imagine you've uh, scored movies on and off for... Uh, I imagine since the mid-70s yeah. uh, during your career. Yeah. Um, the only other uh, Italian uh, score composer I'm uh, somewhat aware of is uh, Riz Ortolani. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering if uh, you, you had any views on him or any other uh, score composers that you that may have, you know, caught your ear, as it were, that impressed you, or uh, uh, maybe influenced you even? Not him, actually, no. uh, but yeah, of course there are scores that I influenced me in, uh, in all of the years. Uh, okay, I did some lot of collaboration in Italy with other composers. Mm -hmm. For example, Pino Donaggio, I did 25 films with him, but just playing keyboards and this mm -hmm. guy and stuff. I had a... Uh, Collaboration with Fabio Frizzi for the horror uh, movies of Lucio Fulci, oh, you know, yeah. the, the Beyond, the City on Living Dead, the Zombie. Oh yeah, things. we've uh, yeah we've reviewed a few of uh, Fulci's films. Did you work closely with him, or was it kind of? No, uh, no, no. We work closely. We are friends, so we were just building together the things. He's uh, the official composer, but the old choir and the horror stuff is me. Oh, he, he was the official composer. Yeah, as well? the, the, the composer I, of Fabio Frizzi. Yeah, I, I knew he was. Um, yeah, with uh, yeah, at our website we have some some mixed feelings about uh, Fulci's work because we see a lot of uh, what it looks like he really trying to accomplish something, and sometimes we felt perhaps not achieving as much as he might have hoped. Yeah, you have to think 
some movies were made very very low budget everything was kept up by uh, yeah they, they need the people musician director and things to, to, to do things that's why they they call like Italian horror on the 70s or stuff. oh yeah we were just doing things very quickly maybe sometimes uh, for a movie two two days that's it so just okay next next scene next scene I mean nobody will have so okay in 40 years this movie will be a <laughs> A sort of milestone. No, <laughs> that was like okay, next one. Maybe yeah, yeah, tomorrow. I know. There was, uh, cer yeah, certainly a large handful of Italian directors, uh, hundreds of movies, you know, to their credit. And obviously, uh, yeah, you, you cannot stay there thinking <laughs> that everyone is, a, is <laughs> going a to be the, the, the next big thing. Um, now, I uh, one of your, I think it was sort of recent, uh, the spoken word thing you mentioned, um, the yellow sign. Mm -hmm. um, were you asked to do that, or was that something you found out about, or draw, was drawn to? No, I, I, I was asked to. Everything started with this uh, um, Anthony uh, DP man. He's a, he's an actor, a speaker. Uh, we did uh, a couple of years ago, three, uh, the Raven, uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. <coughs> by ourselves, just uh, our uh, thing. And uh, this record label, Cadabra Record, is a producer in the in, uh, in, uh, US. They are printing vinyl with spoken words. Mm -hmm. So they like this uh, Raven, they bought the rights, uh, and then said, you want to do the yellow sign? Sure, and we did all this uh, thing. It's a very long thing. It's yeah. a two-side uh, LP. And I'm working and done now uh, another couple of stories. Oh, uh, this time Edgar Allan Poe as well. Can you uh, share any titles or? Yes, one is. I think uh, I can share the titles. I think one is Berenice. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, very. I like uh, very much. One of the most unsettling Poe stories I've read. Berenice is a very. And then the other one is the the the, the red the mask the mask oh, of the red death. red death. Oh, okay, yeah, we I... did this too. I think they are going to be releasing in the same vinyl one on twice. Oh, one that would be yeah, they're about uh, yeah, a good length for. And uh, yeah, I just finished that, and uh, I'm pretty happy the the result. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, because I I know um, William S. Burroughs, the American uh, writer from Beatnik, and you know, went on. He did a spoken word kind of thing uh, for Mask of the Red Death himself in the context of a video game that came out in 1995. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah the video game's called The Dark Eye, and it's a collection of Poe kind yeah. of tales, and you sort okay. of uh, maneuver yourself through them, and one of the things in it is uh, him reciting the Mask of the Red Death story to this uh, sort mm -hmm. of odd uh, stained glass kind of computer imagery as he's uh, telling okay. the story. So I uh, like working on this kind of stuff because you don't have visual, you mm -hmm. are just the actor. And when the actor is good, like uh, this guy, and uh, you follow the emotion. So mm -hmm. I think you amplify what he's trying to do. And you have freedom. You can, no, there's no director, nothing, nobody to tell you what to do. But the, the, the result is pretty really amazing, in my opinion. It's a lot of work because uh, in a movie, you cover with music a percentage of the movie, right? Because yeah. it's dialogue and things. There you have to write 100% <laughs> music, like in Inferno, 100%. Uh, so I'm a hard worker in this. <laughs> so you, uh, do you like follow along with the act? Like, do you both come in with, um, I guess, a sort of tone and then try and make your tones work together? Because I imagine the actor has worked on... No, the actor so works first. Okay. Just with, with no music. They give me the, okay. the audio and I just put uh, underneath the... Right. So that those are that's your that's something you've just finished then and uh, you gave a there was, on your website there was a bit of a teaser for another unnameable project is that uh, something you're currently working on or yes it's, okay. it's ready oh but I can uh, even uh, okay uh, unnameable because it's an idea I don't want people stealing the idea before oh, I, I, oh, no, I, I release it but it will be released very soon because it's basically ready. So is it, it will um, include a, a recording plus some shows. Oh, okay. Based so on that so it's a, you and uh, your music pretty much exclusively in that one? Uh, not only, yeah. No. It, it, it includes even some uh, existing uh, Goblin uh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a mix. And uh, I was interested, um, 
the, the bio on your site, to get back to the bio on your site, you got a uh, computer science degree mm -hmm. in the late 90s. Are you still doing work oh, yeah. in the tech field? What yeah. uh, kind of things are you up to there? Right now, on top of maintaining my website, the e-commerce site that I just uh, managed. Uh, I'm uh, working on virtual reality right now. This is oh. not really, uh, it's something that nobody asked for, so you <laughs> did, and I'm going a little bit deeper on that. I'm uh, uh, this uh, fascinating. Something is fascinating right now. There's uh, not only the virtual reality, but vi with virtual presence in different worlds, like. Uh, you know, Second Life, that yeah. 10, 15 years ago was then it went down. Oh, yeah. I have my own server of Second Life, so I put on my own world and doing my experiment in uh, uh, audio experiment in a virtual audio environment. I mean, instead of streaming audio from a virtual world, you can stream audio from anywhere, right? right. In this case, there are instruments, real instruments in the world that emit sound and move like they were real. And you can actually share this experience with two multi-users. And working on, the, on this thing, oh, it's, uh... it's really interesting uh, working on that and see the, the effect of things that no, nobody never experienced. Now, I say virtual reality because I am, uh, this application is already working. It's a simulation instrument that so you can play. Mm -hmm. But uh, in uh, with Oculus, uh, uh, HTC Vive, the, the, the main thing, you have a 3D experience of that. So you see the world, mm -hmm. you listen the sound coming from exactly like here. This sound there is just turn, listen the sound from there. And then I, I'm uh, extending that to the thing. I don't, I'm not time. That's yeah, yeah, it because sounds I'm, like you're... Because I'm touring. I was saying, uh, you must have uh, very long days, uh, but I yeah, imagine you I'm not, had a lifetime of long days. But the time when you got old shrinks, <laughs> so it's very... They're long days, but they're sh short, because I say, you know what, I am I'm doing something different. Let's trim the cedar or something on my backyard. Yeah, my yeah, my own father's warned me that as he's grown older, time has gone faster and faster for him. So I think time is just a sensation of passing of time, it's just related to our experience, right? If you are uh, one year old, hmm. one month is just one twelve of your life. It's yeah. long, like uh, two years for a twenty-four year old, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like that. I'm pretty sure it's like that. We base the passing of time based on our experience, I think. Yeah, I'm, uh, Plus, with our neurons and nice synapses are just dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ever since my father warned me, I've been slowly noticing that myself as well. So. Uh, yeah, I but, think uh, uh, that's uh, unavoidable. That's uh, that we have to push this. Uh, I suppose that that is yes, as you say, unavoidable, and uh, that's the way it goes. So it sounds like you like these number of things you like the the uh, computer and VR your score work your private work your work with Goblin and I know you worked with a couple of other uh, bands in the past oh yes yeah, would you say they're all about level uh, the do you enjoy them the same amounts in your mind for different reasons or is there something you know is there some you do more because you feel you should no I, I just uh, don't plan much I just find the occasion and start doing uh, what I do. Okay, in the 80s, 70s, 80s and 90s in Italy, when I went back in my country, I, was, I played with a lot of bands, but touring in the summer and stuff, that was more on the work. When I moved to Canada, that was in uh, 1999, mm -hmm. I started playing with uh, bands like Jazz, uh, progress, Progressive Jazz, Jazz Fusion, and uh, just for fun, just jamming. There wasn't a plan to do, to make any project. Uh, so uh, we toured a little bit with this band. It was called Orco Muto, but mm -hmm. that's real. Before starting again with Goblin, then Goblin happened again. So I switched. I don't think I have. Uh, I'm okay. I had to make plans, but I don't make plans in my life. I do sort of plan, but. When there's something happening, I just try to, to, to grab the occasion, like Inferno. I never planned to do Inferno. But I, I happened that I 
I found myself in, involved in this thing that was going well because people were like to say, yeah, let's go ahead with this. Yeah. Twelve years ago, I had no idea what Inferno was, this movie. So, so let's say, there's nothing, not that I enjoy more one thing to another. Normally, I enjoy the things that I'm not doing at the moment. <laughs> But uh, I imagine it all it starts looking better in hindsight, you know, in memories of the... Uh... Yeah, I, th I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky because I, I can do what I like uh, and, uh, and yeah, surviving, <laughs> you can ask more than that, right? No, you can ask more than that. Uh, I guess uh, another thing, you've obviously at this point have had a long career doing movie scores to get back to... Uh, sort of what I'm after, is there any particular score that you'd say you're very proud of, something that, uh, you know, you were talking about, you know, Italian cinema at the time making movie after movie after movie, not thinking anything's to be a particular landmark, is there something that you'd like to be, you know, you know, remembered for? Okay, so uh, these things change over time, so if I had to choose the, the preferred, maybe ne next year I would, I would say something different. Recently, I ended up listening again it was called that we did with goblin that nobody knows it's called mount saint land the killer volcano it never been released in 1980 that was the first time we had the occasion to have the uh, symphonic orchestra playing our team and nobody knows that and uh we were like 25 year old guys writing themes and stuff and we entered this thing we got, we had orchestrated by yeah. this and this huge amount of people 50 60 people playing your music if you're a 25 year old sensible you say oh my god <laughs> this i have a very good memory of that and i think there is like even nice music on that unfortunately nobody knows because it was never released will it ever be released no, I don't think so. There, I, I think it was a, a videotape oh, okay. it was re being released in videotape. It's called Santa Land the Killer Volcano. I don't know. It may, maybe there are, there are versions of all the auto tune, like uh, yeah, old, old thing online. So, so, your favorite thing is something that uh, the rest of us will probably never be able to hear? No, it's not. Uh, oh, that's, that's a, no, it's just a, For example, Roller, there is an album we did uh, out of any soundtrack. It's called Roller. At that period, I wasn't paying much attention, but there is some freshness. Uh, we were young, we were not playing too much. There is some freshness that I like sometimes. I, I have to say that I like all my recent works. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that, because the next year I will change my <laughs> mind, that's why. This, this one in 1980 has enough years to, to, to justify my... Uh, and, yeah, so. So it's, uh, I guess uh, the lesson to take from you here is uh, always keep working and always allow for spontaneity, it seems to be. Yeah, I don't want to give lesson to anybody. Well, I, 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 I say it in the loosest sense do. possible. Yeah. No, I'm not, uh, not holding you to anything. I so. think we are, we own each of us potential, incredible. And we just uh, stuck in a daily thing that we just. Uh, don't let our imagination go. We should, instead of trying to make money, we should try to, to, to enjoy <laughs> our life and maybe just showing aspects that, that we have that, uh, I don't know, but this is my oh, no, it's humble <laughs> IMA show, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Oh no, it's uh, definitely, certainly something I could, uh, yeah. I can see that as a worthy way to... Yeah, can, can you imagine, without you write this, the world, how be, better would be, instead of getting people <laughs> from putting the view, try to make as much money as they can. <laughs> that's, uh, the, once you have the, to, the minimum to survive, I think that's... Uh, oh, I must be really getting old. So <laughs> thing, so. oh, well, that's fantastic. Well, this is... Uh, very illuminating for me because until uh, I knew you were at this festival and did some research, I knew very, very little about uh, you and your okay. backlog work. But I, I will say you certainly got me interested in uh, checking out your output from. You see, I was, and I have decades seller. to choose from. So I'm a good seller. Right? I'm a very good salesman. <laughs> so and uh, yeah, I'm hoping yeah, as I uh, mentioned the. 
the performance tomorrow is obviously uh, sold out, and I do have a press badge. I'm hoping that can get me in. I think I that I will find a way because I, on the, I went to visit the venue today. On the back there are, it's very small. That's yeah, why I, I know the theater. Yeah. My, on the back there is some, maybe you can put two or three rows of chairs. Maybe they can accommodate more people. I don't know. I don't know. I'll definitely be uh, doing everything I can to check that out because, as I said, I have a, I have a long love of silent movies, and I also uh, very much like the electronic sound that uh, has dominated a, a great deal of your career. So those okay. two together, I suspect, will be a, a great treat for you tomorrow evening. Yeah, let's hope that people enjoy that. Right. Because... I have no doubt. Okay, where, where are you located exactly in the U.S.? Uh, oh, uh, I live in New York State. Uh, the site I work for, we have reviewers around the, around the country there. Hmm. Um, and we, um, the main guy in charge, he's from Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, he, um, I think Suspiria was one of the uh, first movies he saw that, you know, kind of wowed him. And part of that, obviously, was the uh, memorable Goblin, you know, score that went with it. And mm -hmm. so that's what uh, started him. And, I discovered them a few years ago and I've been working with them for a few years as a, as a uh, movie reviewer and so I've been able to wonderfully broaden my horizons with a lot of movies that uh, many people wouldn't have had a chance to know about or um, you know even find in a lot yeah. of the cases. So. Now it's much easier that with the internet and yeah. uh, all the, the sharing and stuff, yeah. But, um, so that's, uh, that's what it's... That's what I'm here for. I'm here for the whole festival, so I've got okay. uh, another two and a half weeks of so, grinding so. through uh, movies ahead of me. But it, it's I find them very entertaining. You want to see a movie for three months after that? Uh, right? I, don't know. I find uh, I I love watching movies. It's just okay. one of the you know. If I didn't, I'd be definitely in the wrong profession. But, uh, exactly. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, this is Giles Edwards of Three Six Six Weird Movies with. Mauricio, Mauricio Guarini, Guarini of Goblin and Other Fame, and uh, thank you kindly for your time. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you.